Welcome back to channel everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can build this kind of expandable left nav component in your power apps using a nice gradient background. As you can see, uh, if I hover to a different uh, menu item, it takes me to the different screen. Similar experience uh, you will have when you run this into a collapsive mode. And you will see when I expand this, the right content area shift accordingly as well. So let's just talk about how we can build uh, on this kind of left nav component in your Power Apps. I'll go to my Power Apps and uh, as you can see, there is a five screen I've already created with the home new approval export to Excel and admin. And uh, I have included right now the left nav component that I've built already. So for that, first we'll go to our apps. In the formula section, you will see I've created a named formula menu items. This is uh, simple table and you will see there is text value icon and navigate to screen text value is our uh, this menu item text uh, home new and approval and icon you will see these icon that you are seeing here and this navigate screen is uh, the screen that we have built here so this is a simple table you can uh, create it as well once this is built we'll go to our component i'll create a new component name it as uh, left nav width i will set this one as 50 for now as a manual one and uh, height will set as app dot height which is 768 i'll turn on the app access scope once i turn this on i'll be able to access this named formula inside my component next i will insert a html text and in the HTML text property, I will paste uh, this div, which has a style as background with a linear gradient to bottom. These are the color code. Height I've set manually 768 and width I've set to 200 pixel. Once this is done, I will enable this auto height and I will set some X to zero y to zero and uh, there is some padding i'll just remove this set to zero now you'll see we have a nice uh, gradient background there next step is to i'll insert a hamburger menu include this i'll set the color of this one first Set the color as white and width of this one I will set to let me set this to 26. Height as well set to 26 and X positions I will set this to 12 and Y I will set this to 10. Once I do this, you will see. It uh, is center aligned and sits right there where we need it. Once this is done, next step is I'll insert an image. And this image will use the logged in user image. I will set the width of this one as well uh, to 30. Height as well, I will set to 30 and uh, x will be 10 and uh, y will be 10. parent dot height minus let's keep it 40 so you will see it's a uh, center line from the bottom and it's uh, coming up properly once this is done Next step is on our hamburger icon on the on select of this one. I will set a variable, set a expand nav as a not equal to expand nav. And uh, we'll use this to control the width of our component and here i will set uh, if 
expand nav is true set the width to 200 else set the width to 50. once this is done if you click on this you will see the width is getting expanded i'll go to my html text and if i go to the width property of this one it's set to 200 i will say parent dot width and now you will see it is expanding and collapsing as per our requirement so once this is done next step is to insert a flexible height gallery which is a blank one and in the items property i'm going to call my named formula menu items collections that we have created you will see all the controls and text properties loaded now i will set the x position of this to zero y positions of this i'm gonna do y position of this will be over this uh, hamburger icon which is icon one dot height plus 10 for now and uh, height property will be parent dot height minus icon one dot height minus 10 it is fitting to the screen once this is done so scroll bar off template padding i'll set to zero template size is the height of our individual menu which i'm gonna set to 70 and uh, rest of the things looks okay once this is done inside this gallery i will insert an icon so i'll use a classic icon for now and uh, first thing i'm gonna set the color to white once this is done i will set the width of this to 26 maybe let's keep it 30 and height as well let's keep it 30 x position i'm gonna set as 10 because the default width is uh, 50 so 10 from each side and y will be 20 so as we have set the y 20 from top and below it will be and the overall height is 30 so it will be total 70 which we have set our template height i go to the icon and i'll go to the icon property of this one i will say this item dot icon so you will see it's uh, loaded all the icons from this particular table that we have set it here right and uh, next thing inside this gallery i will insert a button which is our classic button again i'll set the x property to zero y property to zero as well the width will be parent dot width width i will set as 200 fix because parent at uh, width will be too much so i'm setting this custom height i can set as parent dot template height which is we have set to 70 here right so this is done we'll uh, remove the padding and uh, we'll reduce the border radius border size everything and this looks okay to me right now and if i go to the text property of this one this will be this item dot text value and i'll reorder this to back so the icon will be in front now you will see the text is uh, center aligned so it is not coming properly 
will make it left aligned so it will be left from here and there is a trick to add a space here so i will say character 160 is to add a space and then there is an ampersand and i'll copy this i'll keep on adding this you will see let's keep on adding the space to measure this what you can do is you can collapse your nav bar and uh, if you go to the color property of your button just set this to transparent and you will see that uh, in our button text property now if i remove some of these spaces put the ampersand here you see uh, we are still not able to see that icon i think it's the right fit if i just uh, reduce one more you will see in the edges i'm able to see the text so this one is perfect you can add space like this once this is done now we couldn't go to this uh, expand mode again and you will see that uh, everything is looking fine if you want i can add one more space as well so now there is a little space in between of these icon and uh, text when it's into the expanded mode as well so this way it's look uh, good to me now uh, the next part that i have to do is i have to fill the background color for the selected item for that i'll go to my gallery in the template fill i'll paste this code it says if this item dot navigate to screen is equal to app dot active screen then set this color otherwise it will be transparent right so this is done and the same color i'm going to set on my button if we go to the there is two property one is pressed fill so on the pressed fill i'll set this to same color but a uh, little lighter and uh, same color i'm gonna set on my overfill as well overfill okay so this is done if i just play this you will see there is a nice experience in the gallery there is a delay item loading set this to false once this is done i'll go to my screen and inside my screen i have created this container based uh, structure i will remove this particular one and insert this custom left nav which i've created you will see there is this error so if i go here and if i set this to left nav one dot width you will see we have our left nav there and just to let you know um, this is a horizontal container i have created inside that i have two container one is left and one one is right for the left i have turned off the flexible width and the width is coming through our this left nav dot width so when this is into a expandable mode the width will be this and when it's in collapsive it will uh, take the width of our this left nav and uh, the right uh, container i have turned on the flexible width so it's uh, you know adjust according to the width of my this left nav so this way it will uh, work fine for you what you can uh, do is you can just go to your respective screen and remove the existing left nav and insert the new one and 
again set the width property of this one as well. So if we set, I'll say left nav two dot width. It start coming up. We'll do similarly for other screen as well quickly. Now I've set up this for all the screens. And if I just try to run this, you will see uh, in the expand and collapse mode, it's working fine. And if I head back to any of the icon, you will see there is no actions as of now. So for that, what I will do, I'll go to my button. And on the on select of this, I will say navigate this item dot navigate screen. And on the icon on select as well, I can set this item dot, sorry, uh, navigate this item dot navigate screen. Once this is done, we'll go here. And now if we click, it's taken to the respective screen. And I'll see on the click, there is uh, this border coming up. For that, I'll go to the button. Just go to the border thickness, maybe there is focused border thickness, which is set to four, set this to zero. If we run this now, uh, you will see it is working fine. And now we have to uh, shift this entire gallery a little bit down. For that, I'll go to my component in the gallery Y property. If I just set this to, let's suppose 40. And if we go to the height property of this one and set it to 40, it should be fine now. I'll save the changes, publish, go to our app. Refresh. New version of the app is available. Refresh this. Allow. Now you will see we have a new left nav in action. And it's uh, working as expected. So this way you can quickly build this uh, kind of left nav with this. Uh, nice gradient background i hope you like this video if you do like don't forget to subscribe learn and tech thank you so much